Bulk Slash isn't one of the best 3D action games from the 32-bit era. Bulk Slash is one of the best 3D action games, full stop. Let's go! Released mere days before Exact's PlayStation 1 rendition of Ghost in the Shell, Bulk Slash is the Saturn's take on what a 3D action mecha game should look like. Another brilliant Sega Saturn game to never see the light of day in the West, Bulk Slash is an amalgamation of large, open, 3D levels, fast-paced arcade-style action, and road trips with your GPS set to Japanese, and let me tell you, it is Bulk Slash starts out as a deceptively simple game on a first playthrough. There are only seven levels, and you could probably see the entire game to the end on your first sitting. It's by no means a difficult game, but if you stop there, then you're missing out on 95% of the entire Bulk Slash experience. Rather than create a game with dozens of uninspired levels and unrefined gameplay that would take 12 hours to beat, the designers at Hudson decided to take their time refining the core mechanics of Bulk Slash with a handful of expertly crafted and varying levels for a compact experience without any downtime. You can take one look at Bulk Slash and immediately know exactly what you're signing up for, but don't let these chunky graphics fool you into thinking this game hasn't aged well. The controls of Bulk Slash are not only intuitive, but they're also adjustable. By default, the shoulder buttons will rotate your ship, while the D-pad controls your forward movement as well as strafing. This made controlling my mech feel totally natural. Don't be afraid of controlling the camera with the shoulder buttons. While they may be digital buttons, I can assure you it works exactly how it should, though if having the strafe map to the D-pad sounds backwards to you, there are two other control options. Option C is the inverse of A, meaning that L and R control your strafing, and the D-pad turns your mech. Fans of Ghost in the Shell for the PlayStation may feel more comfortable using this option as that's how that game controls. However, I find this setup to be far less intuitive. Then, option B is a mix of the two, making the mech and jet forms control differently. Unfortunately, Bulk Slash does not support the Saturn's 3D analog controller but you can use it as a regular digital controller. This really feels like a bit of a missed opportunity, since the analog controller had been out for an entire year by the time Bulk Slash was released. One of the core mechanics of Bulk Slash is the transformation between mech and jet forms, and each have their own pros and cons. The mech is more limited in its movement and attacks than the jet, but it can get different weapon power-ups, as well as unleash a chain bomb that will cause enemy explosions to deal damage to other nearby enemies, potentially leading to giant chains of destruction. This comes in handy when trying to get a high score, but we'll get to that a little later. The jet form is a bit more straightforward. You have full 3D control over your jet. You can fly up, down, and boost the speed at which you're propelled forward. You're stuck with your forward bullet shot, so no fire blasters or napalm shots for your jet. However, if you stop firing, a meter will build up, and when it's full, you can launch up to eight rockets that will home in on any enemies within your sights. I found this to be most useful when taking on bosses or small clusters of enemies spaced far apart from each other. Both the jet and mech form have their moments throughout the game, and the designers did an excellent job crafting levels so that the player gets to use both throughout a single playthrough. We're given access to three levels at a time, meaning we don't always have to go through the seven stages in the same order on every playthrough. Missions range from destroying specific targets to planting bombs on a giant battle cruiser. Every mission offers both a new challenge and a new environment to play around in. I cannot stress how incredible these levels are. They even managed to make both an escort mission and a labyrinth to be enjoyable. That shouldn't be possible. But 
Bulk Slash uses a variety of unique assets and memorable enemy patterns to make every part of each world feel different from one another. However, what really makes the experience for me is your navigator partner. Here we go! Bulk Slash has seven different navigators that will help you figure out where your next objective is. You start off by yourself, but the first navigator, or miss as the game calls them, is located right in front of you at the start of the first mission. She'll start out by giving you basic instructions like turn around or make a left, but the more you play with her as your navigator, the more she'll level up and the more she'll say to you. This being a Japanese game, the voice acting is obviously in Japanese, but even someone like me with a less than elementary understanding of the Japanese language can get the gist of what they're saying to you. The big red arrow that accompanies their directions is a nice help too. If you've ever tried driving with Google or Apple Maps set to Japanese, you'll feel right at home since when your miss is at level one, she'll literally say the same sentences as your GPS will. I'd say I can speak and understand Japanese at about the same level as a one-year-old Japanese child, but I have one advantage over a one-year-old native speaker, and that's that I know how to tell time. For most of the misses, once you get them to level 3, they'll stop telling you to simply go forward, backwards, left and right, and will start giving you directions based off of the hour hands of a clock. As someone who can only understand a little Japanese, I felt pretty cool when I figured this out, and I just love seeing how much effort went into the voice acting for this game. Each miss has her own mannerisms and differences in their speech patterns, making them all feel more like real people. And not every miss will tell you the directions in the same way, so depending on who you like best, you may be hearing different instructions. There's seven ladies in total, one to be found in every level of the game, and they've each got wildly different personalities. Rhodes is the default miss, hanging out right in front of us when we start the game. She doesn't have a lot that makes her stand out, but since she's the first miss I met, I kind of have a soft spot for her. Naira could kill me with her bare hands. But my favorite miss has got to be Koron Steiner. Shit! I love when characters in Japanese games speak in English, and that is exactly what she does. Hearing her say, Everything is alright! Before a mission puts my heart at ease. Like, yeah, everything is alright. She reminds me of Ayako Katagiri from Tokimeki Memorial. Hi! In fact, Oddly enough, Bulk Slash in general reminds me a lot of Tokimeki Memorial. If you're not familiar with it, Tokimeki Memorial was a pioneer in the dating sim genre that started out as a PC Engine release, though it was later ported and updated to consoles such as the Sega Saturn and PlayStation. If you didn't know, this was the game that Koji Igarashi worked on right before Castlevania Symphony of the Night. You get to play through your teenage years again, making friends with and dating a variety of the anime girls at Hirameki High School. My Japanese is nowhere near good enough to really get the most out of this game, but when I played it to capture footage, I ended up playing for over an hour. So fun! Plus, there's a reference to it in one of my all-time favorite games, Zero Ranger, so I will definitely be taking a look at it once I can understand the language better. Just like in Tokimeki Memorial, there are multiple endings depending on which miss you take to the end of the game in Bulk Slash. These endings are typically romantic in some way, so it's kinda like a mecha action dating sim if you think about it. A Toki Mecha Memorial, if you will. Like I mentioned earlier, all the different misses are hidden throughout each level, and finding them can be a bit tricky sometimes. I managed to find them all without using any guides, but each girl also supposedly has a special ability that changes the gameplay in some way, though I cannot for the life of me figure out what any of them are, and none of the guides online at the moment document what they are. All I know is that the final miss gives you unlimited weapon energy for the mech's special weapons. 
all of the others are a mystery to me. But while Bulk Slash is a game you can beat in 45 minutes, Bulk Slash is not a game you can beat in 45 minutes. Like I mentioned, it's going to take some time exploring each level to find every miss, and even more time getting them all to at least level 2 in order to see their ending. Plus, on top of that, Bulk Slash has tons of art to unlock by getting high scores, once again, just like Zero Ranger does. In order to both level up your miss and unlock her artwork, you've got to learn the scoring mechanics of Bulk Slash. You score more points for the bigger chains that you can rack up. Chains are measured by how many enemies or obstacles you can destroy in a single shot. Typically, if you want a chain bigger than 8, you'll want to position yourself in the mech form just right to set off the chains of obstacles and enemies either lined up or packed close together. But you're also given a sizable bonus based on how quickly you can get through the level, so you've got to become familiar with each level's layout to not only find these big chain scoring areas, but to be able to find them quickly. The jet form is going to be able to get you around the map much quicker than walking as the mech, and can help you get smaller chains of enemies and obstacles that are packed far away, but you'll need to use your mech to really rack up the big chains. There's also bonus items, health pickups, and weapon upgrades that are dropped by enemies and boxes lying around, so there's always stuff to do on your way from one objective to the next. Each miss has three bonus ranks that you have to achieve in order to unlock her artwork, each of which is marked off by the million point barriers. Overall, breaking into the three millions isn't all that difficult after you've figured out how the game works, and working to unlock all the extras is the fun part. Plus, the miss you got the high score with shows up on the high score list as the background art, so it gives you a nice incentive to get a high score with your favorite lady. Bulk Slash is truly one of the very few games that I enjoy playing to get a high score. As I said before, each level of Bulk Slash is a handcrafted piece of art. Levels range from wide open space battles to claustrophobic mazes, yet somehow you never feel disoriented. While for the most part your miss will be able to tell you where to go, on some levels this won't always be the case. Even then though, we're given a world map before starting the level that we are free to look at for as long as we like, and each level is designed in an intuitive way, guiding the player through the winding corridors without them even noticing that they're being helped along the way. The only flaw in level design would have to be the draw distance, which can be a tad short for some of the more open levels, but it was most likely needed in order to keep the game running as smooth as it does. This game just wouldn't work if it was lagging all over the place with a choppy frame rate, so the short draw distances don't bother me. The main character is actually made up of sprites instead of 3D polygons. Some may say that it looks weird, but I actually much prefer it. This gives our main character more detail without sacrificing any polygons for the enemies and environments. And I'm glad they made this decision, because not only do the mech and jet forms that we have to look at for the entirety of the game look great, but the world and enemies also look great. A lot of people love to hate on 32-bit polygon graphics, but they definitely have their charm. Like G. Darius on the PlayStation, I think this genuine attempt at good 3D graphics mixed with 2D sprites and animation works well for Bulk Slash. Everything we see is either a robot of some kind or a building. All of the people we see in game are drawn by hand with 2D artwork, so there aren't any shovel faces or weird body proportions to laugh at. Bulk Slash doesn't look like a game that's being limited by its hardware, in the way that a lot of 3D 32-bit games do. If you compare it to something like Burning Rangers, you can see we've got a much more vibrant, colorful, and detailed world that we're exploring. Not to mention, your miss is a WAY better navigator than the one in Burning Rangers, even if you can't speak Japanese. Plus, fighting giant battleships in outer space is way cooler than putting out fires with a squirt gun. The larger enemies and bosses look particularly nice and feel like a lot of care went into making their designs. Every single one is totally different from the last, and 
While they don't provide a huge challenge, they're a blast to fight against. The easiest way to beat almost any boss is by dodging their attacks as the jet and firing a string of homing rockets their way. But I love trying to see if it's possible to beat them without homing rockets or by staying in the mech form the whole time. That's how you know a game is good, when you want to play it over and over again in different ways, setting different limits on yourself just to see if you can do it. I would love to see this game get the G Darius HD treatment. Bump up the resolution, sharpen some of the jaggies, and I'd buy this game again for a modern console. And the music is something that must be mentioned, as almost the entirety of the soundtrack is produced using the Saturn's onboard sound chip, the Saturn Custom Sound Processor, or SCSP, which I didn't even know existed before I got into this game. I assumed most CD-based games used Redbook Audio for their music on the Saturn, but that's not the case. The SCSP-generated music makes up the majority of the music in Bulk Slash, with only the intro and end themes being Redbook Audio. I'm assuming this was done since the amount of voice work put into the game must have taken up a sizable amount of space on the CD. However, using the onboard sound chip is far from a compromise, as the music in Bulk Slash is just as good as its gameplay. Each level has its own theme, ranging from heart-pumping action songs, bringing out the excitement of tearing through a city and fighting waves of mecha adversaries, to more subdued songs, highlighting the barrenness of the snow planet of Weiss. I love that when you're left with just one final objective on every level, a special final target theme plays, amping you up for the boss battle yet to come. There are a lot of nice little touches like this throughout the game, like how there are a bunch of 3D retro future space posters of Lyra, the pop idol miss, strewn throughout the city level, or when the bosses enter each level, the aspect ratio changes to widescreen, and it's as if we're watching a newscast on television, or how the background picture that displays on the high score screen is the highest level bonus picture you've unlocked with the miss you got the high score with. Bulk Slash just encourages the player to keep coming back for more. It doesn't need a 12 hour campaign or other game modes. Bulk Slash is just fun in concentrate that will keep you coming back for hours and hours. However, that isn't to say that I wouldn't love to sink my teeth into a more story-focused and longer experience. The characters in Bulk Slash are fun, and it would be cool to play a version of this game where we had to make decisions that would affect how our miss thought of us, and each miss would have a different set of moral standards, so playing through with any one miss could be totally different. It's just a thought. However, if Bulk Slash sounds like the perfect game for you, but you don't know any Japanese and want to have a better connection with the miss you choose to fly with, then fear not, because at the making of this video, a translation patch with voice acting is on its way. Not only that, but it'll also be featuring the voice talents of my boy, Pandemonium! At this point, all of the actual translating is finished, and the team is focusing on implementing the text into the game and getting all the voice lines recorded. If you're watching this in 2022 or beyond, there's a good chance that the translation will be out already, so you'll really have no excuse not to play this game. Bulk Slash is more than just a fun Saturn game. Bulk Slash is a case study of how to make an incredible 3D game using limited resources. While the Saturn may not have been a 3D powerhouse back in its day, Bulk Slash is proof that if developers worked with and understood the limits and benefits of the hardware, they could craft a damn fine 3D game. I'm Boffner, and thanks for watching. See ya! Goodbye, everybody!